hello, welcome to episode 14 of The Daily Distraction. It is I, Adele from House of Colour, Tayside and Fife here, wishing you a very merry and happy Tuesday, if you please. So I'm back to work today, my normal work, and very much needing this daily distraction to bring me back down, to, to ground me, if you know what I'm saying. I had such a lovely week off last week and I rounded it off last night by watching Coco on Disney Plus, which is all about um, a little boy who just wants to be a musician and his family is not happy about it. I really recommend it. It was so good. The music was so much fun. It was, it was just such a light-hearted, funny escapade through um, Disney colour and magic. So it was a lovely way to finish off my week off and I hope that you have similarly had the opportunity to chill out with some feel-good movies or whatever it is that makes you feel good and feel back to normal. Yeah. So today we are talking about what colour surprised you most at your colour consultation? And I would be very interested indeed to find out what your thoughts are on this. Over on Facebook, we have four people behind the magic eye, and I don't know who they are. Could it be Kirsty, Fiona and Alison who are always watching, but their comments never appear until the very end? If so, welcome to you. And over on Instagram, we have Isabel and we have Kelly at the moment. Hello and happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a good one. So, the colour that most surprised me at my colour consultation was pink. <laughs> Before my colour consultation, I only ever wore soft and muted colours, typically from the autumn palette. Let me just give you an example of the colours that I used to wear before I found out what colours actually suit me. Things like brown, mustard, grey, uh, camel. I had a camel coat which actually washed me out a great deal and beige and cream and all these colours. I was quite happy being invisible. I was quite happy um, buying clothes in these colours because I thought that they all went with everything. Like I thought I couldn't go wrong with these colours. And what I didn't realise was that these colours were actually making me look washed out and tired and jaundiced in the case of mustard. People used to ask me if I was feeling okay when I wore mustard. And they made me look just a bit tired and dull, to be honest. And I didn't know any of this until I had my colour consultation and found out what colours actually suit me. So the pinks, the pinks were a revelation because I had never worn pink before. I don't, I don't recall ever having had anything pink and I certainly didn't wear pink lipstick because I didn't wear lipstick at all. I was so scared of getting the colour wrong and looking silly. So let me just show you some of the winter pinks that look amazing on me. Cerise, magenta and raspberry, they all look stunning. Raspberry is actually my wow colour. Which one is that? This one here. This is one of my five wow colours. Lovely. So these are all cool, icy, vivid pinks from the winter palette that look great against my cool, clear and bright undertones in my skin. Compare that to soft and muted pinks. If I had ever worn pink before, and I don't even remember wearing pink, um, these would have been the pinks that I would have went for, the soft and muted ones, like the autumn and summer palette, because I was quite happy blending into the background and not being noticed. <laughs> I would never have worn a colour like this. I just would never have had the confidence to carry it off unless someone had actually told me that I looked amazing in it, right? In fact, I remember being given my 711 Deep Magenta lipstick at my colour consultation 
and being absolutely horrified because I'd never worn lipstick before and I thought I'm not even going to wear that on a night out. That is what I told Shirley when she was doing my colour consultation. I said, Shirley, there's no way I could wear that. That's far too bold. And she said, just give it a chance. And wearing bright lipstick like this is a bit like having something, having a new piece of furniture in your house. Like it's the first thing you notice when you walk in the door for the first couple of weeks. But after that, it becomes part of the furniture and you don't really notice it. You do notice, however, when you're not wearing it, <laughs> which I'll tell you about in a moment. <laughs> so, who do we have? Oh, we have a few people who have joined. Oh my goodness. Kirsty, Kirsty, I can see your wave. This is like the first time I've seen it. Welcome to you. We have Nicola watching. Hello, Nicola. Trisha, Kira. Kirsty is saying yellow for me. I remember telling people I couldn't wear yellow as I didn't suit it. I just didn't know what yellow I could wear. Yes, so yellow is such a bold colour and it's it's a kind of like wearing red or yellow, red or pink. It's like making a statement, isn't it? And you don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> and especially if you have blue undertones, cool undertones like I do, then you have to be extremely careful with yellow because it can make you look jaundiced. Debbie says... Hi Adele, it was brown. I am a spring and my mum dressed me <laughs> as a kiddie. <laughs> yes. Actually, Debbie, I have a colleague, Karen, whose school uniform was brown and she hated it. She absolutely hated it. So when she was diagnosed, diagnosed as an autumn recently and one of her wow colours is brown, she was pretty horrified at first because it brought back all these memories of her school uniform. But actually, she looks terrific in brown. <laughs> um... Andy is watching Andy Gray as well. Hello, Andy is an old school friend who I haven't seen for many years. And he says, it's nice to see and hear you again. Thank you, Andy. It's lovely to see you join us on live. I hope you're very well. And over on Instagram, Kelly is waving and Isabel is saying hello. No colour stories over on Instagram at the moment. Maria says, I was surprised being told that olive green and mustard were what I should be wearing. I hated the thought of looking like a 60s bathroom suite. <laughs> yes, very classy. And actually, I think this is what a lot of people think when they get colour analysis. Is they think it's something like, a lot of people think it's like an 80s thing. Because I think, you know, it started in the 80s. And people are like, oh, you know, I don't want to be told that I'm going to be looking good in colours that are old fashioned. Um, I think this is like a perception that people have. They don't want to be dressed in a particular palette that makes them look like they're from a particular <laughs> place and time. <laughs> but that is not what it's about at all. No colour is banned. It's all about the hue and the tone and the shade of the colour. And you have all the colours to work with. So yellow does not suit me, but acid yellow I can wear in small quantities to provide accents and definition in my outfit, for example. So armed with that knowledge, I can wear colour confidently and I can wear whatever colour I want. I just want to make sure that it's the right tone and shade for me. So it's clear, bright, icy and vivid. But for Maria, for example, it would be earthy and vibrant and soft and muted. So what else was I going to mention? Oh yes, the first thing that I bought after my colour analysis was this pink t-shirt from M&S. It's a magenta colour and I think it cost me about £8. And it's looking a bit worn now because my colour analysis was about three years ago. Um, but I'm still wearing it and I love it. And I remember putting this on for the first time thinking, oh my God, I can't believe I'm wearing this. People came up to me and said, wow, you look really good. You look, have you been on holiday? <laughs> the next thing I bought after that, after I got rid of my camel coat, was to buy this raspberry coat from Tesco. Um, the colour actually looks a bit weird over on Instagram, it looks orange, but over on Facebook the colour looks more accurate. And this was, when I bought this, I was like, whoa, this is so bold, like, raspberry pink coat is a statement, right? Especially after I've been used to wearing that muted camel colour for so long. But I love wearing this, it just, every time I put it on, I just feel so alive and vibrant. I'm like, yes, this is me, I'm coming out to town, even if I'm just, you know walk into the corner shop for a pint of milk or whatever but I love it it's just so me and even the style I'm really happy with I bought it before I got my style done and even then I, I, 
I think I got it right. I think I nailed it with this pretty early on. So, what else? Colours that I was surprised didn't suit me. Brown. I had always thought that brown suited me because I have brown hair and brown eyes. Now my hair is black, it's dyed black at the moment. But if I look forward, you can see my roots, which are coming through quite significantly now. Dark brown is my natural hair colour. And I just always assumed that people with brown hair and brown eyes suit brown. But actually that is not the case because I have cool blue-based skin undertones. And brown just makes me look a bit washed out. It's not great. It's not a great colour on me at all. And I don't have anything brown in my wardrobe now. So I was surprised that brown didn't suit me. And also I was surprised that mustard didn't suit me because one of my favourite combinations was black, white and mustard. And I kind of thought it gave me that sort of 1960s um, kind of look. Like a sort of black and white gingham with like mustard gloves or a mustard scarf. And I was really surprised that this colour did not suit me and I was horrified to see the effect that it actually had on my skin in the mirror. Ooh, nasty! Another thing that I was really surprised by was how invisible I am without colour. So I said before about my lipstick, after two weeks of wearing it, I just got used to it. It became part of the furniture. What I was really surprised by was when I didn't wear my lipstick, how invisible I appeared. So if I had not put on lipstick and I had gone to work or gone to the shops at lunchtime for a look around the shops and I caught a glance of myself in the shop mirror, I would be like, whoa, I looked so much older and just like really tired and a bit doer, if you know what I mean. So I, I suddenly then realized just the impact of putting lipstick on and how much color that brought to my face. Let me just show you how invisible I am without my lipstick. I don't know if this is going to work, actually, because I'm wearing quite a bright colour underneath. And I'm wearing eyeshadow. But if I cover up, if I cover up my lipstick, I've kind of gone invisible. And now I'm completely in focus. You see that? <laughs> Magic! So, a lot of people are asking me at the moment, is it possible to get my colours done online during the pandemic, during social distancing? And I am going to tell you, no people, it is not possible to do colour analysis online. At HQ, House of Colour HQ, we have tried this as part of our developing training for new consultants coming in. Are there parts of it that could be delivered online? And the results are an absolute no it's not possible it's there's too many variations in cameras and in the color corrections and automatic corrections that um they all make it is just not reliable or robust it's not a, a method that should be used so if you are interested in color analysis i would strongly advise that you save your money to get it done properly in a face-to-face -face consultation after the pandemic is over. And if you want to read a bit more about this, there is a blog on the House of Colour HQ website at the moment, written by our managing director, Helen, um, which explains why colour analysis online is not a good idea. It's not going to give you any reliable indicator of the colours that best suit you. Right, that is my time up now, people. <laughs> yes, I set a timer. So I need to dash now. Um, I will catch up with the comments later. I hope you have an excellent Tuesday and I will see you back here tomorrow at 12.30. Have a lovely day. Bye.